you know, have you learned, I mean, our style, uh, Amy and I have talked a lot about how to introduce ideas and bring them out working on the end your carp confusion book. We, we wrestled through a lot of different ways of presenting things, how much to present, how little, how do we tell people exactly what, um, what to eat? Do we, do we just give them the building blocks, the general ideas? And that's what we settled on. I mean, so there's so many different ways of doing this. Um, and I have to say through the years, there'll be people who come to me, they've read the new Atkins for a new you, which is a book I'm an author on, and it has, um, a certain food lists and variety of things to have. And then they, they kind of think that that's the only way to do it. And so if you start presenting menus and here's what you do for the week, it actually can be limiting for people. Now, not everyone. <laughs> and, uh, those of you who just need the direction and understand food and how to prepare things, you know, there's really uh, very little uh, to say other than eat things you like from the list of foods. That's so first thing is you don't have to eat everything on the list. Now I am sure I said that in the class, but it goes by fast. And I did have uh, someone come in who had a spreadsheet with every little item on the list and kind of checked off. I had this, I had that. No, that's not the point. The point is to get into the keto metabolism. Remember, there are no keto foods. It's a metabolic process, and you want to keep the foods low in carbs. But um, you want to eat foods that you like, and that's one of the keys to be sustainable. Um, now, in terms of variety, you might be surprised that you're happy with very little variety. And that's fine as long as the nutrition is good. So a uh, big mindset paradigm shift is you don't have to eat colorful things on the plate. You don't have to have, you know, uh, a, a certain amount of this, that, the other thing every day, there's more flexibility than that. So, but you know, at first we do ask you to have vegetables and leafy greens, for example, but they are limited because they have carbs in them, but, um, you don't have to have them every day. So it's funny. So someone will come back to me and say, well, I haven't been strict. I said, well, on the days you haven't been strict, what have you been doing? And they might say, well, I haven't had my vegetables every day. Well, that, that's a minor issue because as long as you're getting good nutrition, meaning the meats, the eggs, poultry, uh, fish and shellfish, you're going to get all the nutrition you need there. So it's okay if you relax those rule, the, you know, it's not a rule, but, um, there's, so that's an upper limit on greens and vegetables. So some days you just can't get the, the, get it together to have the vegetable. It's okay. So the variety, um, it comes in different ways. It, it's uh, thinking that you need the green, yellow, whatever, you know, the rainbow of colors. I, I mean, I want you to throw that out the window. That's kind of an old way of doing things that doesn't focus on the nutrition of it. Uh, I, I'm not sure how that actually got started, but um, probably to have you eat more vegetables and we want to limit vegetables on a keto diet. Um, you know, at first it, limiting the variety might be an ad advantage for you if you're just getting started and you're not sure what to have. And I'm reminded of um, uh, an interview. I don't know. It just hit me at that moment when I was thinking about this. Uh, Michael Crichton, one of the producers and authors that uh, many of us know from, uh, from our uh, time, uh, Andromeda Strain and other um, thrillers, um, he was asked once uh, why he ate the same thing every day. And, you know, he's, he could have anything. He's a producer, uh, apparently, you know, a uh, rich person could have anything. And he, he said, well, it takes away three decisions I have to make. So he liked this for breakfast, this for lunch, this for dinner, and he had that every day. Now, as long as that's good nutrition, that's fine. So some people are happy to have bacon and eggs every day. Um, you, you might not have lunch if you're not hungry and you have dinner and, and you mix up the variety a little bit, but you're happy and that's just fine. So don't, don't feel like you have to rotate through all of the different foods and all. So the variety can be as simple as you want it to be, as long as it's good nutrition. Um, um, the other thing about variety early on, uh, some people 
feel like they need to have something new every day. So these are kind of the two extremes. You know, it's, I'm fine having the same thing every day, kind of like the puppy chow and, you know, the puppies eating the same thing every day. And, you know, it, it, that's fine as long as it's good nutrition. Now, there are other people who feel like they need to have something new every day. And that's a little more of a challenge. Uh, and uh, uh, again, we our style is to teach you kind of how to drive, how to do keto. And then you can figure out what kind of car you want to get in. If it's fancy, you go to, you know, uh, the farmer's market and grass-fed beef and, uh, you know, rent a cow or divide a cow with a friend from someone you know. Uh, you know, that's fine. Or if you are eating fast food and uh, that's fine as long as you keep the carbs low. Um, the uh, If you're trying to find something new every day, try to think through if that's really something um, that's it's not a holdover from the old other way of eating where you think you have to, you know, there's a lot of eating by the clock, a lot of habit eating. That, that you know, the faster you can unlearn that, the better this is going to work, um, because it is possible actually to eat too many of the low carb foods and not lose weight. Um, Sam Feltham, who is a uh, uh, young man in the UK, did his own experiment on himself where he ate many many calories. I think it was five thousand a day, which is more than really anyone would need, and he actually gained weight on a keto diet, but he didn't gain as much as he gained on the other diets. And I remember him in a blog and at some meetings that I've asked him to write his experience into a paper so that we can get it published. And I hopefully we'll do that. But the, the point is you can eat too much of the, the foods that are quote unlimited. If you're not getting the natural limitation that keto gives to just about everyone. Uh, um, so the variety early on, you know, our guide is to keep it simple. Now, if you do need books and cookbooks, and I know everyone's you know, it's pressure to, do we need a end your carb confusion or a depth cookbook? And and I'm all for that, you know, but it'll take time to do it. And then uh, I don't want you to feel, I my preference would be to do sorts of things like we've done with Chef Scott, where we're teaching a basic principle of here's how you have ground beef, rather than here's one recipe with ground beef. Uh, so the I... I would like to have the how to to prepare things as well other than just the recipe but um if you do need variety um no problem uh, there are lots of different uh websites cookbooks and all that and um so people send me things and uh you know here's one a uh, keto meal prep cookbook for beginners you know has um 600 different recipes and and they're fairly simple you know, and the, so part of the the issue here is to match the teaching now with your style of learning. You know, there, so if you, a lot of people today can't just take a recipe and say, oh, well, that that's how it would work uh, or how it would look. Uh, Linda's low carb website, which is a time honored one, which I like to tell people about Linda's low carb uh, menus and recipes website has a picture. So it's the, the style is actually the here are the, the ingredients, and here's a picture, so you get an idea of what it looks like. Now, it doesn't tell you what it tastes like, uh, but um, I've done a lot of teaching using the Linda's Low Carb website, um, pulling up the cauliflower rice, the mashed cauliflower substitutions. The um, There's actually a uh, macaroni and cheese, it's called, which is a cauliflower macaroni and cheese substitute there at Linda's Low Carb. Um, so when, um, if someone early on is doing great, but they uh, tend to miss, you know, don't quite feel satisfied, I, I screen for kind of two domains. The Do you miss sweet things or do you miss the older, the you know, the other types of foods, the savory foods? So if it's a missing sweet things, then I have a certain category of, you know, sugar-free items. Um, with uh, uh, low carb chocolate shakes, the high protein shakes, because uh, most of my patients want something fast and simple. And um, but you can do things that are more complicated. On the savory side, I, I kind of do a screen for: Do you miss, you know, rice? 
and then talk about cauliflower rice if they haven't had cauliflower rice before. It's even in our area in the grocery store in the frozen section. So you don't even have to use the the um, uh, food processor to make your own cauliflower rice, although you can do that too. Uh, the mashed cauliflower for mashed potato substitute, the um, cauliflower with macaroni and cheese substitute, these are things that I would just routinely go through. Um, now the days I, in the clinic, talk about chaffles at the first visit. I mean, it's become so popular, so easy uh, to do the um, uh, chaffle. I, I bring up, uh, I did a one minute chaffle video recipe and just put it on my website and I pull that up in the clinic and and kind of preempt the bread, missing bread, toast, uh, uh, bagels, things like that for a sandwich. Because in, in my area, there are a lot of people who come back. They say, well, I miss my bread. And, and so I, I proactively plant the seed that here's some chaffles. And, and I've sent people now a 200, a PDF file with 200 chaffle recipes. And now I get permission to email them the recipe PDF. I found it online and the person who put it together said that they love it if it was sent around. Um, the problem with that PDF file is that it does include almond flour with some of the chaffles. And if you're starting out and you find you have to be really strict in order to get it to work for you, I don't want you using almond flour for, at first. So remember, it's not on, not on the allowed food list at first, the nut butters and nut flours. So you have to, you know, when you're looking at the chaffle recipes, realize that you can't use the almond flour ones yet. Um, but um, so I'll go through, you know, what kinds of foods are you missing? Um, it, it's actually remarkable that people who, um, I, I used to be able to be in a room at a, in a class at the beginning, uh, kind of like uh, we've done with you doing, watching, but I would watch people, you know, their responses in the class. And it was, there was always someone, one or two people out of 10 who would have a very dramatic kind of, you know, my fruit, what will I do? You know, my, my bread, how will I survive? And, you know, I reassure, no, it's fine. And what's remarkable is that, that just, it's unbelievable almost that in just a day or two, those cravings go away. So, um, but if they do linger, and I, I guess my point was, there are a lot of people who come back to my office who somehow have bread getting back into their, their diet. It's the carb creep. It's the, even some people know exactly how many carbs are in the bread, but it's enough carbs to stop the program from working. So, um, so these are the kind of substitutions for variety that, um, that I'll talk about, um, I did go to a lecture once uh, at the Obesity Medicine Association meetings, and there was a psychologist in the Chicagoland area. Uh, he had been working in a keto clinic, which was unusual, but great. And he he um, got up and said, um, as a as a psychologist, understand cravings and all this. He said, you know, if someone is is still kind of unsatisfied, like um, I'll have some people come to me and say, I don't know what to have. And, you know, like, well, you know, have you looked at the list again to go over the foods that you can have? Well, no. And so there, there are a lot of people who want things done for them, which is fine. I mean, it's my job. But I, so I try to, to get to teach you how to find other things rather than just give you the thing that you're missing. And um, one of his insights in the in a low carb clinic was that if someone doesn't feel satisfied and rotating, trying to find Usually it's because they are a sugar addict and they miss sugar. And it's sugar that is kind of calling out to say, you know, find me and eat me again. Um, so I'm knowledgeable about that, but I want to give substitutions as much as possible to make this as easy as, it, as you transition. Um, and, you know, so looking at different, this is like really simple. And, um, and if you want the more complicated um Christy Sullivan, who's a friend of mine who lives down the street in Greensboro, has a whole brand of uh, of um, cooking keto with Christy. She's on videos with Diet Doctor. And um, uh, in fact, her, her style as a PhD educator is that half the book is really how to do things. 
you know, here is an explanation of things. But then the other half of the book is, you know, fairly complicated uh, recipes with, with pictures and, and, you know, it's a, it's a big, heavy book. And so, I, so I'm trying to, again, teaching you the basics. You have to find the, the type of cooking you want. Um, I mean, maybe you want all of these different options. Um, and then the style of whether it's fancy ingredients that you don't understand, you have to shit still, um, uh, find on the internet. You can't find them in the stores. Some people, that's a whole other domain of where, which store is it in? And do you shop online? If you don't, then you're limiting to these things. And, and it just is, it's not something I can accomplish in a 10 minute, 15 minute follow-up appointment, which is one great aspect of a program like this for ongoing support, because, you know, I've learned to point people in directions and kind of get to the, the kernel of what you need to know. And then now in this group, we can direct you to other sorts of resources. Um, more and more, although it's still rare, I'd say infrequent anyway, people want vegetarian options. And uh, most people in our area will eat meatitarian or, or omnivore. And, um, you know, so someone like Kelly, Kelly Peterson a long time ago started making cookbooks, uh, keto East, for example. Um, and you know, but if you want, you want to buy, you know, a picture book and, you know, that's all, you know, again, to your, your preference. Um, I was also sent different, you know, individuals experiences with, you know, mom's pancakes and you know, they're, all sorts of great, like published on their own. Oh, there's cauliflower mac and cheese uh, idea. Um, yeah, so you know some of these are really gems, you know, that are are cheap and easy. And uh, but again, how do you how do you find them? Well, um, we'll try to direct you to. This was from Larry uh, Mong M O N G U E of Keto Low Carb of, of Northeast Georgia on Facebook. So that's Larry's book sent that to me. Um, and then there was another book at a conference given to me, Keto Bun. I don't want you to see that one because there are too many carbs in those. So that when you're looking at cookbooks and looking for variety, as we mentioned in the class over and over and over, be very careful about using total carbs, not net carbs. Still, some of these keto cookbooks are going to be using net carbs and you really don't know uh, about your assuming about the subtraction of the, the fiber and the sugar alcohols. I don't want you to have to assume. Um, eventually you might increase the total carbs, but I think it's a great, um, it's a better foundation to learn how to do total carbs and you just increase the amount when you can, if you can, if you want to, um, and not use net carbs to get into that trap of um, prepared foods and foods that really aren't truly low in carbs, it's more difficult to get keto on those kinds of uh, kinds of products, for example, or even you get too many vegetables. Um, so, um, so early on, you know, that's one of our uh, main theme is to to keep it simple. Don't worry about having the rainbow of color on the plate, all that sort of thing. Make sure you're sticking to the list, and don't worry too much about the variety. If you want to, you can. Uh, changing the sauces up is a simple way to, uh, or, or the dressings, uh, learning, um, so after chef Scott taught me how to make that simple, you know, onion, uh, chopped onion vinaigrette. Um, I did that for the rest of the week, just cause I had some scallions, the onions left and used the oil and vinegar based on that concept for a while in the clinic. What I notice is people tend to rotate through a different food or, or different, um, uh, well, for example, uh, I'll hear, well, I'm tired of eggs. You know, well, okay. Have you had eggs in all the different varieties, uh, you know, or just stop eating them. You don't have to have eggs. And then what happens over time is that you start wanting eggs again. And it's kind of, there's sort of a natural cycle of eating a certain type of food and then, um, withdrawing from it saying i can't have it anymore don't want it anymore um and um, i think that's a natural cycling that happens in in many people um 
So one of the downsides of thinking you need to have variety, and I've seen this happen where um, someone gets uh, learns keto from, say, Christie's book and thinks that that's the only way to do keto. So they don't have the basic understanding that there's no keto food. It's really a metabolic state. Um, and in, occasionally, if you go off or come on really quick or have a very small amount, that's going to be okay within the certain uh, parameters we have. Um, I've seen people feel overwhelmed because they don't have time to prepare all of those fancy foods and they don't have time to food prep and all this. And I, I kind of you know, scratch my head and say, well, you don't have to food prep. I mean, now if you want to, you can, especially if you're cooking for a family or you're, and you're, you're working um, and you're gonna leave and, and don't have a lot of time, you might food prep on the weekends think ahead, prepare, have things ready. Um, but um, the less complicated you make the whole process, the more likely you are to keep it going over time. Um, it's been really great to see everyone uh, chime in with their um, recipes and, and pictures and just how you're doing and, you know, good and bad. I mean, this is a place to support you and um, certainly, you um, on this day, which uh, is a holiday, um, it, it took me 10 years to give up jelly beans on Easter. I mean, that was just, uh, I, I grew up with jelly beans and Halloween and all this, and, and I had kind of compressed it to that one day out of the year with, with the family, with small kids, that, um, um, and then I would just not have them, not have them linger around the house. So they're, you know, they're here, they're gone a good strategy for uh, something like Halloween where you might have um, the, the treat on the day of the holiday, but the holiday doesn't become a hollow week in a hollow month. Um, and um, actually Amy wanted me to bring this up uh, that I um, uh, thought many of you would like to know that occasionally I do eat carbs. You know, I, I'm not a, a Puritan puritanical keto guy. I don't think anyone should be, you know, zealotous puritanical meaning you know holy and bringing in the the shame and guilt and and the arrogance of being perfect you know i i i um uh again but you have to know i've been doing this 20 years where 99.9 percent .9 of the time i don't eat carbs so what that does is it allows me for example to every now and then have a croissant uh, so i don't like go have the hundreds of carbs. I mean, I, I couldn't really do that. Now, everything I know about how bad carbs are for you, uh, that would be like, I don't know, smoking a pack of cigarettes. I just, I couldn't do that. Um, but uh, so for, I guess it's good for you to know that down the road, if, if your metabolism allows, yeah, sure, you can have carbs again. You know, unless the research says that here are the benefits you are going to have by being in ketosis all day, every day, I'm not going to be, you know, even with myself, I'm not going to be 100% strict about it. You know, um, I think we get a lot of benefits from lowering the insulin level. And, you know, if you do that 29 out of 30 days a month, you're going to be better off than you were by not having, uh, by not doing keto at all. So, so anyway, um, that, so for variety for me at this stage, Occasionally, I'll have a carby meal. Now, it, um, when I think about it, it's once a month, really. It's not very often, uh, and, and I enjoy it. So early on, remember, this is 20 years into it for me. Early on, that kind of approach can derail you, can be very difficult, and that's why at first we are very uh, uh, strict about uh, the, the rules and following them just as uh close as you can until you get the, the time and the familiarity uh, with it over, um, over a period of time. So I guess it, it, to summarize, summarize, food variety is less important than good nutrition. And the nutrition can be the same food every day. If it's uh, the, the variety can be the same food every day if it's good nutrition, right? So this is the, the main point is it, there are a lot of different ways to do this. It's very flexible. There are a lot of different style differences. And, you know, one of the 
nuances, one of the, the challenges that you might have different styles in the same household. Very common and uh, can cause some friction, but you know, you have to just be aware and, and tolerant of different styles of approach to food variety. Um, and um, anyway, I hope that's helpful. The, um, uh, there, at first, like me, I want to know that I'm doing everything right. And uh, it, it, there, but the nice thing is there are lots of ways to do it right. Um, and we'll try to help you figure that out for your individual lifestyle and style of approach to the variety of, of different foods. Um, I'm hoping Chef Parker can bring in some different ideas for us too. Um, let's see. I'm going to take just a moment to see if there are any huge um, questions here. Um, yeah, it's okay to not have veggies every day. Um, a couple of t-shirt questions. Um, uh, protein shakes. Uh, well, so these are um, different. They're different brands. I mean, the Atkins brand is one I know. Uh, there's Pure Protein. Premier. It's interesting. I've seen Premier Protein now on TV ads, which is awesome because that means they have enough money to pay for TV ads. So um, one way to get chocolate is to just have a sip. I, I went over that in the class, but I know there's a lot of information in the class. You get a sip of the low carb high protein shake. It's about half carb. So don't feel like you have to drink the whole shake. Okay. It, it's just a chocolate fix really. Um, yeah. Just not every now and then I don't, I'm not, um, People come to me, oh, I have a protein shake every morning and you glug down the protein and well, if you weren't hungry, I'd rather have you not eat anything. That would be better. Uh, yeah, but um, let's see. I uh, think of, uh, yeah, food prep, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.